Welcome back to the Build Day Live here at Supermicro. For this video about uh, all things GPU, I'm joined by Suresh Arani. Welcome, Suresh. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Uh, what's your role within Supermicro? Hi, I'm a Director of Product Management for GPU Systems. We have a bunch of GPU uh, offerings uh, for various different uh, markets, and I manage that product line. So that's for everything from using GPUs to accelerate desktops and VDI, through the high performance, uh, high performance compute and, and workstation kind of use cases, all the way into the newer machine learning use cases as well. Absolutely. So we cover machines for VDI. We cover applications that are traditionally considered HPC, which is con uh, continuing to grow. But of course, the big one that we are focused on and that's really growing very fast today, impacting all industries, is deep learning and AI. And of course, for the, the process of that is large amounts of data being trained through a model and that requires vast amounts of, of computation and that's being done efficiently at the moment with GPUs because uh, CPUs simply can't handle that kind of rate of parallel, trans um, rate of parallel transactions that the GPUs do. Exactly. So for AI to work as a technology, one of the key ingredients is data and very large amounts of it. You can get a deep learning model to be accurate with a limited amount of data, but that may not be very interesting. For it to reach like 90, 95% model accuracy, whether it's image recognition, speech translation, when it approaches the accuracy of uh, what an average human yeah. being would be, that's when you can replace a human or augment a human and that's when the technology starts getting really interesting. For that to happen, uh, what is needed is a very large amount of data and a very large amount of computational horsepower. And as you mentioned, as you alluded to, for that uh, really today, the main option for doing that for large models with 100, uh, 100 layers or more within the model, uh, kind of the de facto platform is a high performance GPU or multiple high performance GPUs so your training time training times don't exceed and uh, don't blow up and don't go into weeks. So you can weeks do and in years. Of, so of yeah, training. so you can do it more realistically in a few days. And yeah, so you need a lot of data, and you need a lot of uh, computational horsepower to crunch the data. And that's where massively parallel GPUs stuff uh, like the new V100 with more than 5,000 CUDA cores, specialized tensor cores, come in. And sometimes uh, the models are being trained on not just one GPU, but even a bunch of four or eight or even more GPUs. Right. So what's this piece of hardware we have in front? It's a, a server with a bunch of heat sinks, but that's a little more heat sinks than, than we normally see. Right, so this is one of our systems. We probably carry about 10, 12 systems. Uh, we go from one or two GPUs all the way up to eight or 10 GPUs, and we've got systems under design that are 16 GPUs in a single node. So we've got a wide range. I wouldn't be able to fit all of my <laughs> offerings on this table. This is one of our guys out here. This is a 1U 4 GPU server. This is a dual socket with three UPIs between the two CPUs. This is Skylake based. I also had a version that was Broadwell based. But really what's interesting out here are these guys in the front. These are four high performance V132 gig GPUs. Uh, really a GPU is kind of a misnomer in this case. It's like historical thing, GPU. Although it's not doing any graphics processing this time, it's really a targeted high performance AI workloads. So before I get into that, I'd just like to differentiate the traditionally GPUs came in a form factor that looked like that. A double width GPU card that plugged into a PCIe slot. Recently, NVIDIA has for the last two generation, generations started offering a separate form factor which is more like a CPU socket. It would be, you would be able to see it under this heatsink, which goes directly on the motherboard. We've got these large 1U heat sinks to cool 300 watts of processing power. So within this 1U, you really got four GPUs and two CPUs, so six high performance processors running here. And these are connected with NVLink. NVLink is the interface where GPUs talk to each other directly. And if you've got a large training model, which is distributed across multiple GPUs, there's going to be a lot of GPU to GPU communication. And with NVLink, you avoid having the hop to go through the PLX switch CPU and come back. And these guys can talk to each other directly. With the V100, each GPU socket has six NVLinks. So each of these four has six links. And each GPU is connected to every other GPU, the other three in this system, via dual NVLinks. 
and those links go through our PCB. They're built into our GPU board. If you look closely, we have a separate board uh, for the G uh, GPUs and for the CPUs, and we connect them across PCI bridges. So the PCI runs between the two boards, and this gives us flexibility to rev this system quickly when a new version of the CPU or GPU comes out. And that's uh, it's a little hard to see in the video, but there is literally a gap between the board at the front where this rail is at the top. There's, an, there's a gap between the two boards, and all that connects is these thick braided cables that are bringing the PCIe signals from the server at the back through to the GPUs at the front. And when these GPUs are no longer sufficiently powerful, they could be, this board could be switched out and exactly. new GPUs are. They're, they're sufficiently powerful, but uh, uh, there's always something newer and faster and higher performance coming out. Uh, Moore's law is slowing down, but uh, the industry is not. There's more innovation going on. There's more it's, happening on the parallel processing It's earlier in the life step. cycle of these uh, GPUs than it is on the CPU. So there's still more innovation to be had in, in there. Yes. And of course, there's more money to be made from that innovation compared to yes. innovation in the CPUs. And you were mentioning that the gap is hard to see. And that's one of the kind of things in, uh, in Supermicro's DNA. We pack it really close and fine, but we don't compromise on the thermals. So we like to have compact, high-performance solutions, but definitely with a lot of thermal capacity so you don't see any GPU throttling. And that's why there's this vast bank of fans at the front. Exactly. The, uh... So when I, when I talk about a GPU system or a GPU server, really the soul of a GPU system, uh, soul of these systems is they should be able to mechanically fit and support the number of GPUs that they're rated for, four, six, eight, whatever the number may be. There should be enough redundant power supply, enough power delivery to get all the amperes, the current into the GPUs, especially when they are cranked up and running uh, workloads at full capacity. And the third aspect that these are designed for is there's enough airflow in this one going front to back to make sure that there's enough cooling capacity to get all the thermals out. As I mentioned before, we have six high performance processors in a 1U. So mechanical fit, power delivery, and thermal, thermal airflow to cool these, and also more and more people are now starting to look at uh, liquid cool systems, especially for high performance GPUs out here, although bulk of the market still remains air cooled okay. today. But as we see more data and more new data centers coming out with uh, liquid cool built in, li liquid cool infrastructure built mm -hmm. in, we'll see more people uh, wanting to tap into that and um, you leverage that uh, infrastructure available, liquid cooling infrastructure. Cool. So this is very much the uh, AI deep learning uh, Yes, yes. It could also devices. be used for some guys doing high performance computing. Mm -hmm. There's all different variants of that, which be used in oil and gas. It can be used in scientific research, particle accelerators, all different kinds of applications. Some of those guys also need very high levels of performance who would use this, right. uh, use a system like this. What about this rather taller unit that we have? Yes, this is our 4U4 GPU system. What it offers us is two high performance CPUs and up to four, I've got two loaded out here. I'm just, I kept the other two slots open so people can get an idea of what the system looks like. Four high performance C uh, CPUs. We support both actively and passively cooled GPUs. So we can support the Nvidia Tesla line as well as the Quadro line and a lot of IO in the system. This one is kind of unique and interesting is because it has a, it comes in a tower workstation form factor, so it can be used under your desk. It also comes with a rail mounting kit, so it can work as a rack mounted for you. So it gives, it's a server come workstation form factor, one of our popular selling models. I've also got a version of, a similar version of this, but which does eight or 10 GPUs. So as I said, we've got a lot of different products. And we are very proud to be developing a, a, a future generation products, which a product which will support up to 16 GPUs in a single node. So definitely uh, the trend towards having the GPU being used for high performance computing for AI is not just a one time thing. It's definitely uh, getting more and more adopted. It's one of the interesting things as we hear the discussion about software eating the world, that everything is software running on commodity compute. That definition of commodity compute is changing with with GPUs and at oh, some absolutely, stage absolutely. FPGAs as well. So historically over time people have talked about the killer app uh, maybe 20 years ago, maybe I'm dating myself, it was Microsoft Office and then it was the internet and then it was high performance video. Really the, my perspective is to in today's world, the killer app for hardware is AI and deep learning training with large deep learning models. So it requires so much hardware. One of the other things I wanted to point out about this guy 
is just the size of the CPU heatsink in here. It's probably a little hard to tell from the perspective, but these CPU coolers here are almost the full height of this uh, three or four for you, for you uh, enclosure. Um, they're massive, and so you're not putting a low power CPU in there just to drive the GPUs. You're actually getting fairly serious CPU power. Yes, some of some of the applications can be mostly GPU centric, but there's a, a mix across the board. Some do uh, need like VDI will need a 50-50 workload. They not only need a powerful GPU, but they also need a powerful CPU to do the heavy lifting, to do the pre-processing and feeding the workloads into the GPUs, keeping the GPUs busy. So we like to over-design, have thermal capacity. These can comfortably handle the top bin of Skylake at 205 watts. With Cascade Lake and future products coming from Intel, I'm sure that the CPU TDP will be going up and we'll have definitely a lot of thermal headroom in the system to handle those higher performance CPUs coming and higher wattage CPUs coming in the future that we anticipate. The other thing I noticed is although you talk about this as being a, a workstation chassis, it does have redundant power, just like the, the server class. So when this is put into a rack, it is a full oh, absolutely. server grade of, of availability, not a, a as I said, it, it's As I said, it's a hybrid. It can definitely, it's definitely a server class product. And not a light device either. <laughs> this is why we had you bring the, the smaller devices in. The table probably wouldn't have coped with some of the, the <laughs> higher higher end. Uh, yes, if I got ends. my 10U16 GPU system, we'd need a reinforced table to <laughs> hold it up here. Great. Um, I imagine you'll be showing this at GTC. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in the near future at the conference. W when is that and where? So GTC is now almost like a worldwide conference. There's the, uh, I think I would call it the anchor, anchor show in San Jose. And then they have regional shows around the world. I'll be traveling in a couple of months to GTC Japan to showcase and highlight some of these systems and also talk to some of our Japanese customers. Uh, Supermicro GPU systems have been established in the industry worldwide and we ship to multiple tier ones across the globe. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Suraj. And Thanks, it was a pleasure. And thank you for joining the Build Day Live here at Supermicro. Stay tuned for more videos.